Hello, and welcome to the Blender Basics video series. These videos are designed to accompany the chapters found in the Blender Basics tutorial book and not as a replacement. So if you don't have a copy of the book, head over to www.cdschools.org Blender Basics to download a free copy. This video will focus on Chapter 1, the Blender interface, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is actually take a look at a few web pages since this is Chapter 1. Uh, the first page I have you to is actually the Central Dolphin School District web page where you will find the Blender Basics book and all the other Blender downloads that we have available for you. Um, Blender Basics started out in 2004. This is actually the fifth edition, trying to keep up with the changes of the program. As you scroll down the page, you'll see the entire book available as a download, all 266 pages. Or you can download the individual chapters as needed, and there even are, are a couple of pages that are just kind of highlighted as we need to. Some of the new additions to this edition of the book, um, we've added uh, discussions on, on uh, the Cycles Render Engine. We've talked about motion tracking and even added some 3D printer tools. I've aligned uh, some uh, national standards that, that kind of work with Blender. It's always something that teachers need to do, educators need to do to be able to justify what they're teaching for their content. Uh, there are some new activities and there are unit reflections at the end of every chapter as well. Another important website you're going to need to go to would be Blender.org. Blenders.org is actually the official website of Blender. You can download um, everything from Blender. You can even go in and download past versions all the way back to Blender from about 15 years ago when it first started. So this is always a good place to go. Right now the current version at the time of this filming is 2.78C. Another important website you might want to go to would be BlenderNation.com. BlenderNation.com is basically all news Blender related. Every day there are new updates in here. It's a great place to start your day out and look at uh, some of the great topics that might show up in Blender with, with tips and just what other people have been doing with Blender. There are various areas, different areas within the, the site and how you can contribute. And the very last site I want to look at too is also called BlenderArtist.org. Uh, basically it's a forum of Blender users so you can post and also get information uh, and give information as you get better with the program. So uh, this is a very active forum. A lot of information is always given into this site. So let's go straight over to Blender. So we've installed it, you've downloaded and this is what you're starting out with as you work with Blender. You basically have a 3D viewport here in the middle of your screen. You start out with three objects. You have a cube, a lamp, and a camera. Uh, you'll see a lot of information around the screen for you. Some basic navigation that you'll need to get used to in Blender is first, the uh, left mouse button repositions your 3D bullseye, your 3D cursor. Uh, wherever the 3D cursor is located is where new objects will go in Blender. If you right mouse button click on things, you will select them. So left mouse button moves the 3D cursor, right mouse button selects objects. If you scroll your mouse wheel in and out, you'll zoom in and out with Blender. If you hold down your mouse wheel like it's a button, you'll rotate around on an axis. And if you hold down the shift key while you hold down the mouse wheel, you'll actually be panning around on your screen. So the mouse wheel does a lot in Blender. You know, scrolling it zooms in and out, holding it down rotates around, holding down shift while you hold down the mouse wheel will let you pan around in space. You'll notice also too that you have a toolbar across the top with your um, traditional menus here where you can save different things. You even have some different screen layouts that you can work with. Um, the different render engines that you're working with and current release. Uh, this bar over on the left hand side is called the tool shelf. It is actually part of this 3D window in the middle. And I, and I can close that panel up. I can click on this small plus to open that panel back up again. And I can continue to move around on here. There are many tabs within this tool shelf for, uh, to allow you to get the various tools that you need to get into. Um, over here on the right hand side you'll see another toolbar going down the side. This is what we call the properties menu. And this is where you're going to find the majority of your main commands in Blender. So anything to say, set up your render, you know, what do you want your final output to be? Do you want it to be a PNG picture file? Do you want it to be a movie? We can change that to a lot of different things here. This would be the size of your output. How many pixels do you want this thing to be when you render it? If you're going to make a movie, here's the range, the start frame, and the end frame. And you also have some other buttons that we will talk about as the videos go along. Uh, what all these different things do in Blender. Lots going on in here. 
You also have a small viewport up here above this, um, which is basically set up to be the outliner by default, which lets you see a listing of all of the objects you've created and if they're visible and any op anything tied to those objects. And you also have another viewport at the bottom of your screen here. Um, and this is basically just giving you a timeline. There's your start frame, your end frame, play, rewind buttons, um, some various uh, animation key framing options in here. And then you've got a bar down here where you can slide your timeline. And we'll just take it back to frame one again. Okay, now any viewport here can be set up as any other viewport in Blender. For example, if I want this little tiny viewport up here that's currently the outliner to be another copy of a 3D window like this, you'll notice that every viewport has a small button in the upper left or lower left corner. And this will let you change it to other different types of viewports. So there's one, here's one down here. So if I click on this one, these are a list of all the different type of viewports and again you want to look at the Blender Basics book to get a, a full rundown on all of these. But here I could change it to a 3D view. And now right here I have another 3D miniature view of exactly what we've used before. And if I click that button there's the tool shelf. And we also have a button on the side here which would give us some uh, numeric input data for an object. So you have windows on either side of your screen. I can even do that over here too. Okay, So you got a lot of different viewports you can deal with. Now, one other thing that we mentioned in this uh, um, introductory chapter, too, would be um, doing the file and doing some saving. And you see some saving and open. Uh, you got a lot of different options here. Now, for some reason, uh, I've already clicked the save button. It's taking a few seconds for this to react. And I've just noticed this starting to happen when I downloaded the newest version, 2.78C. Uh, usually, this is instant. Uh, I don't know if it's an issue of trying to locate all the various drives on my school district issued computer. Uh, when I'm not at school, I'm not tied to a lot of my drives. So it um, takes a few seconds for this first time for it to open up. You'll notice as you look in here too, you have some other options that you'll see in most, most programs as you work with. You have an open new, save, open recent, where you'll get a recent list. Um, if you wanted to bring other Blender file parts into other Blender files you can use an append command. Now when you open this up this will look a little different than most Windows type programs that you might be used to. Here are all of your available drives and if I grab this line and drag this down a little bit which it's taking a long time to respond to right now you'll see some other options in here there we go. Okay and you know recent files that you've opened will show up here at the bottom. Uh, there's a back arrow and again you can click on whichever drive you want to go to. The top line up here is the path where it's going to be saved. So if I clicked on a folder here, that folder will show up there and then the bottom line would be where you name your file. Now in Blender, you if you're saving a Blender file, you do not need to type in the dot blend at the end. Blender will automatically put that in there. But let's say you have a window open and you're going to save a movie or save a picture file output. You have to type in the extension at that point, either a .png image file or a .mp4 for a movie file. And then you either just hit enter twice or you hit this save Blender file button twice. The first time you hit enter would be setting the title after you've typed it. The second time would be saving it. Okay, um, and some of the other options you have in here right now. You have import, export. Blender works great with a lot of other programs, which is the strength of the program. External data. Uh, a lot of times as you add elements to your scene, for example, you have a picture of something that you've put onto your object as a texture. If you open it up on a different computer, it's not going to know where to find those pictures. But if you check this box where it says automatically pack that data into this Blender file, those images will now become part of this file and they'll be with you no matter which computer you go to. Something else that we want to look at right now, um, when you work with Blender, there are a lot of different things that we can turn on. There are a lot of different add-ons within Blender, and there are a lot of different things that we can set. We would go to the file pull-down menu, and we would go to the user preferences menu, where you can bring up a window and turn a lot of these things on and off as you need to. For example, the uh, interface. Um, you can change a lot of things in here if you would like to. And again, it's something that I don't go over into a lot of detail in the booklet, but um, you can find information anywhere within the Blender sites. Um, editing, you can change the way that things work in here. Input, for example, let's say you're um, 
Um, you, you just don't have a three button mouse right now. You can emulate a three button mouse. Let's say you're using a laptop that does not have a number pad. And in Blender, the number pad is a very important thing. Uh, you can emulate a number pad where the numbers going across the top of the keyboard would act like a number pad. Add-ons is one of the most important places that you would want to go right now. Okay, so if I went into here, I could, um, I can go in here and I can look at a lot of different um, different types of plugins and add-ons right now and um, I turned on a screencasting one right now so that you could work with it but there's a lot of add-ons that are really good for example the dynamic spacebar um, if I hit the spacebar right now I get an add menu here that you won't get by default normally if you want to add objects in blender and you don't turn on the dynamic spacebar you either have to hit shift a to get an add menu or you need to go over here to the tool shelf and hit the create button and find your main primitives that you can create for different things. So dynamic spacebar is a great thing. Um, back in also in here in user preferences, system would be a great place where you can go in again make some settings. Maybe you need to uh, set up a little bit more memory um, caching in your system. Um, files. If you have a place that you want Blender to go to to find fonts for you all the time, you could set up a path in here by clicking on this little file folder uh, and it would actually go there all the time. You can uh, set up a folder for textures. So if you have a whole library full of pictures and um, if you go to the CD Schools website, I actually have a, um, a library of textures that we use that you can go in there and, and pull from or sound. So there are a lot of different things you can set up here. Different themes within Blender. You can change your entire color coordination of your system and go with a lot of different things as well. Whenever you make any changes in here, just hit the save user defaults and it will remember it on this computer from here on out. So you won't have to turn them on again. Okay, next thing that I wanted to talk to you about in Blender right now too is navigation within Blender. As I'm working around, you'll see that it says user perspective up here. And you know, when you look at a perspective drawing, that just means things get smaller as they get further away from you. Okay, I'm going to deal with the number pad on my computer right now. So if you have your number pad on your computer, take a look at it. Number five is what toggles you between an orthographic view and a perspective view. If you're not familiar with the term orthographic, orthographic just basically means that these sides are parallel to each other. They don't get smaller as they get further away. Um, my preference is that when you are building and working on your scenes, always 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 work in an ortho view perspective is great for rendering out a picture when you're done but it really messes you up um, trying to add things and get them in the right locations also looking at your number pad seven one and three on your number pad corresponds to traditional orthographic views for example if i hit a number seven i go to a top orthographic view if i hit number one i go to a front orthographic view and again it always tells you that up here in the upper corner if i go to a number three that would be a right side view so seven one and three top front side view if i hit zero on my number pad that puts me into a camera view meaning that shows me exactly what the camera is currently looking at in Blender. And if I were to hit F12 on my keyboard to render a picture, that's exactly what the camera sees. So now I'll hit Escape to get out of the, the camera rendered view. And the, uh, the 2, 4, 6, and 8 keys just kind of rotate you around a little bit. So if I'm in the view like this and I hit 2, 4, 6, 8, it's kind of rotating me. But again, I just usually hold down the mouse wheel to rotate. Um, some other things that you can do with the number pad. For example, I said that when you use the right mouse button, you select objects in Blender. So as I select the lamp, if I want that to be centered up on my screen, I can just hit period on the number pad and it will automatically center that onto my screen. If I pick the cube and hit period on my number pad, then it will automatically center up on that. If I pick the camera, hit period, it will automatically center up on that object. So it's an easy way to maneuver around getting to know those number pad keys the best you can. The plus and minus kind of zoom you in and out the same as we've done there. If I'm over here in the properties menu, the plus and minus on the number pad will zoom me in and out on my display screen if you need that to be larger or smaller. Um, if I'm in one of these windows and I can't see all of my buttons, let's say I have this window a little bit smaller with my left mouse button. If I hold down my mouse wheel, I can actually slide back and forth and slide up and down by holding down the mouse wheel. And I can even do that down here as well. So I can slide around all I want to. And the very last thing that we wanted to um, 
look at in this part of the program sometimes you accidentally hit the numbers going across the top of your keyboard so if I were to say hey hit number seven to go into a top view and you instead of hitting the number seven on the number pad you hit number seven on the top of your keyboard oh no where did my object go it's still there you just maneuver it into a different layer over here and we need to maneuver back to layer one so that's just one thing to kind of take a look at so these are the basics of just trying to maneuver around in 3D space a little bit um, to try to set some different things up. So again, read the chapter, take a look at the activities in there, and um, thanks for watching.